Your feet are about hip distance apart and relatively close in towards the buttocks. And you can shuffle around a little bit, looking for maximum length in the spine. So possibly bringing your chin in a little bit more than it is already. And encouraging your tailbone towards your heels. And then if you're happy to, closing your eyes and dropping inwards. Turning your gaze into your inner landscape. And I'm going to read a short poem by Dana Fowles to start off our practice today. It's called Still Point. There is a quality to stillness so rare that the air shimmers in its presence. It's there between our eyes. We hear it when we dare to speak the truth. It vibrates with the music of life, dances in the wind, breaks forth from the trees into a clearing just as the sun rises and settles into silence once again. There is a quality of stillness so rare that I am bared to the very marrow of my bones before it. May I choose never to be clothed again. And so as you settle into your body, becoming familiar with sensations that are present here for you this afternoon. And with your gaze inwards, a little bit of a weather check, noticing how you're feeling, not only physically, but also how you're doing emotionally, mentally, and energetically. What's there for you right now? And as you observe and notice, asking yourself what quality would you like to bring to your practice? What quality would you like to bring to your practice and to take into the rest of your evening? And may that quality settle into one word or two words that you can keep with you as a sankalpa, as a focus for your practice. Maybe the words of that poem resonated for you, but they might not have, and that's absolutely fine. It's a very personal thing. And then very gently as you inhale, begin to rock over your tailbone peeling your lower vertebrae from the floor. So you're not actually lifting your hips, you're just peeling the lower back off the floor to create a gap. You could even take your hand there to see if it's there. And then exhaling, you're tilting the pelvis back so that your lower back flattens on the floor. Maybe your tailbone even lifts a little. And you feel yourself pressing into your feet. So you do this over and over and again, this movement, nearly every class, every week, you come into this gentle tilting of the pelvis forwards on the breath in and tilting it back on the breath out. So can you take a few of these? It's very soothing, not only in terms of the gentle ripple up the spine, 
But this pelvic tilting is known to trigger our and nourish our parasympathetic nervous system. That branch of the nervous system that's associated with intuition, with rest, with relaxation. And so keep your tilt going, but maybe if you can feel it, noticing how the rest of your body is involved in this movement. In fact, the whole of your body, can you feel the back of your head moving on the mat? Can you feel a ripple up the whole spine? The front of your body almost heaving on the inhale, coming forwards and falling back towards the floor on the breath out. Taking a few more rounds. Very gentle, very soft. If you can really feel into your spine, see if you can differentiate between vertebrae. And you might like to stay with this very simple pelvic tilting or next time you exhale, you might like to keep curling your tailbone up so you lift the lower back and the hips off the floor completely into a little bit of a bridge. And then slowly on the inhale, bone by bone, you settle back down again. Tilt the pelvis forwards. And then on the exhale, you flatten the lower back and lift yourself into a little bit of a bridge. And continue with your moving bridge. If you like, you could bring your arms into the movement. So on the exhale, when you lift up the body, you lift your arms over your head. And on the inhale, you float your arms back down again tilting the pelvis forwards. Can you take three more moving bridges and on the last one, maybe stay up for three or five breaths, something like that, just to feel a little bit more strength in the legs. A little bit more lift of your side waist. I'm imagining you're up there now with me. Let's take one more breath and really draw the breath right up to the very top of your chest where your collarbones are. And then bone by bone, releasing the spine back down to the floor. Very, very gently. Until you feel your sacrum lovely and heavy. There's a warmth to the sacrum as it nuzzles into the floor. And you can lift your knees into your hands and have a little circle with the knees over your lower back. Lovely. And then taking that circle with your knees in the opposite direction. So even in the movement, you might observe that quality of stillness that Dana Fowl's poem so beautifully expresses. And if it's not there for you, it doesn't matter at all. If you'd like to roll over onto your left side, we're going to practice our <clears throat> seaweedy twist. It's a very, very gentle twist, and it's much more about the delicacy of repetitive movement than it is about coming into a full twist. So if you'd like to lie on your left side, maybe cushioning your head on something, and you want a series of right angles. So right angles in the ankles, the knees, where your thighs meet your hips. And then your arms also coming out of the arm sockets at a right angle. So you're all stacked up on yourself, your palms are together. And then very gently 
sliding the right palm about halfway down your forearm and your head rolls with you a little way and then gently stroking the hand back again maybe moving past the left hand and maybe your head rolls onto your forehead so feeling a release in the right shoulder here and then next time you draw the hand along the inside of the arm you might come a little bit further head comes a little bit further and then you roll back again so on uh, Tuesday night when we did this I mentioned how one of Wills and my teachers talks about maybe taking 40 repetitive movements before opening out completely into a twist which we could do but it might mean we don't do anything else in the class but the spirit of this the quality of this is just very gentle increments and i always describe this as a kelpy seaweedy movement underwater imagine you're in a kelp forest And being flushed and flowing with the current of the sea. Maybe by now your fingertips are about halfway up your upper arm. You're going to find your own rhythm, your own pace. More important than anything else is to enjoy the sensation, the touch of your fingers on your skin. Maybe your fingers have come bit further over into your chest now or your shoulder and keep going keep going until eventually you will be looking over to the right and your arm will be opening out to the right but not maybe quite yet I don't want to hurry you Looking for very loose movement, very sensitive. Noticing how your head gets a little massage. And if you have opened out all the way to the right and you like being open in this twist, your gaze over your right fingertips. Maybe stay a few breaths, open. One thing I forgot to say is that it's absolutely fine for your top knee to move with you. It doesn't You don't need to keep your knees stuck together here. And if you've come to staying still and open, you're looking for softness, as much softness as possible. And if you're still moving, that's completely fine. One thing to observe is if softness is something you feel throughout the body, or if you're aware of gripping anywhere, maybe in the hip somewhere, or in the jaw, or behind the eyes. Let go. And then gently making your way back stroking your right fingertips across your chest down the left arm until your hands meet you're closed like a clamshell and taking a moment to simply feel the body here you could roll over flat on your back for a moment to feel the after effects of having worked just that one side of the body. Maybe you notice something, maybe you don't. And then rolling onto the right side of your body and coming to that same series of right angles, maybe cushioning your head. Starting with the left palm placed on top of the right. And then begin again so you know what's coming. Just sliding a little way before you slide forwards, passing over your right hand with the left. Being in no hurry. 
So if you hold a lot of tension in your upper body today, for whatever reason, you could come into strong stretching, that is possible. But sometimes this kind of very soft, repetitive movement has a really profound and quite a long lasting effect in releasing knots of tension in the body and in the mind. So keep sliding. Feeling yourself as kelp in a lazy current swirling around you. Maybe shafts of sunlight pouring through you. And take your time, be in no hurry to open completely to your twist to the left. Remember to move your head with you. And breathing softly, breathing naturally. And at some point, again, probably not quite yet, but at some point you might be on the back of your head looking towards the left. Maybe in the next time you come over, you release your arm so it's extending out to the left. You might move a little or you might stay open, gazing with soft eyes to the left and inviting that quality of softness, of stillness, of innocence into the body and mind. And breathe and let go. Feel the dust settle. And I would quite happily stay here for about half an hour but I might lose you all, so gently coming back with your left fingers down the right arm and closing into a little bit of a clam. Taking a moment here, very gentle, before you roll over onto your back and extend your arms and your legs to feel the whole body. Feel the whole body. Feeling the support of the earth, the floor beneath you. From the back of your head all the way down to the heels of your feet. And feeling the softness of your belly receive each breath in and release each breath out. When you're ready, bending your knees up again, the soles of your feet on the floor, and taking your right ankle and placing it over the left knee. And you could take your right hand and gently press it into the inside of your right thigh just so that you feel into the right hip crease. It might be really stuck, or you might feel quite loose here. And take a breath in. And as you breathe out, release your hands and lift your legs up towards you. And take a breath in here, and then breathe out, release the left foot down. Take a breath in, and breathing out, gently draw the legs towards you. Take a breath in here and breathe out, come down. So bringing attention to the right hip and side of the thigh, breathing in. And this time you breathe out to stay up. And you might want to draw your right toes towards the knee. If you can, take your right hand and thread it through the gap in between your legs. And you can interlace it with your left hand behind the left thigh or over the shin 
What you don't want is to have your head crooked back with your chin up towards the ceiling. You might even want to place something under your head. And then take a couple of breaths and explore your experience of this pigeon on the back. Can you breathe a little deeper and feel into sensation here? Maybe drawing the left knee further in towards you and easing the right knee away. And breathe. Soft in the face. And now take a full breath in. And on your breath out, lift your head and your legs towards each other. And then take a breath in, really tight in a little ball. And as you breathe out, release your head, release your hands. But keep your right foot on the knee. And we're going to do that slightly strange set of movements that bring us into a deer posture. So if you'd like to hold your right foot with your left hand, you can take your right arm out to the floor, wherever feels comfortable. And with your foot on the hand, begin to rock gently from side to side. So we rock over to the left and your arm might swing with you. And then you rock gently to the right and your arm might swing with you. So can you release enough into the body without trying? There's nothing really hard to try and do here. And just allow yourself to moodle and schnoodle and waft from side to side. So we're still kind of in this watery, lazy, I think it says quite a lot about my life right now, quality. Maybe each time you rock from side to side, you rock a little bit further over. Until eventually you can rock and swing yourself all the way up to sitting so that your right foot is inside the left thigh about level with the knee and your left foot is by your right hip and it might feel a little bit awkward to you you could flex that left foot I'm going to because it's more comfortable and see if you can release down a little bit become quite heavy down in the hips so I know for a lot of you from feedback that hips are a tricky part of the body. This is quite a nice way to have a quite a soft inquiry, quite a soft entry. But first of all, let's come to the neck and take a lovely deep breath in. And as you breathe out, take your left ear down to your left shoulder. And see what happens to the right shoulder and the right side of the neck. And then breathe in, come to the top. And breathe out, come down to the right shoulder. Seeing how this affects the sensation in the left hip, it does for me. And then breathing in, come to the top. And as you breathe out, gently bring your chin into your chest. What does that feel like? And with the next breath in, lifting your head gently and Tilting your head back ever so slightly to feel into the throat. And we'll do that one more time. Breathe out, bring the chin down. And then breathing in, lifting up the head. Tilting it back. And on the next breath out, coming back to neutral head and neutral neck. We come into this slightly awkward movement. So it's the same principle of tilting the spine like we were on the back, but in this pose, in this deer pose, it's quite restricted. So I would take your hands to your knees, or you could have them to your hips. And as you breathe in, gently tilt forwards, maybe open the chest and the throat. And as you breathe out, tilt the pelvis back and even Pull back a little bit on your knees, drawing the side waist back, navel to the spine. And then breathe in, tilt forwards. And breathe out, draw back. So the whole spine is involved, just like when you're on your back. 
And don't worry, this is not a big movement, it's subtle. You might only be moving a few millimetres and that would be absolutely fine. But can you make it a little bit delicious? Can you make it sensual and pleasurable so that your whole body is alive, every cell of your body, surface of your skin? is alive and moving subtly. And you know, I feel very, very caught up in my left hip, I'm immediately aware of that restriction. I'm imagining other people might be feeling other areas of restriction or the same as me. And then let's come back to a neutral spine and take a little bit of a moving twist. So breathe in, find length, a nice light sense of brighten up your chest. And as you breathe out, take a little twist to your left. Just a little one. Feel your way. And then breathing in back to the centre, you can use your arms. And as you breathe out to the right, lift up your left hip a little. Not, you can't see. Lift up your left hip a little as you look over your right shoulder. And then breathe in back to the centre. And breathe out, you close this twist to the left. And you breathe into the centre and now you get this lovely opening and lift in the left hip. And you breathe in back to the centre. And breathe out, you close your twist to the left. This is the last one. And then breathe in back to the centre. And open out to the right, really drawing that right hip and buttock with you. Beautiful. And then come back to the center. And just take a moment to notice now what's going on in the hips. Do you feel tight? Do you feel heavy? And from here, bringing your legs out wide so that you can see your toes. And then holding on to, imagining this is a great big butter churn. So you're holding on to a big stirring stick. I'm sure it's got a technical name. And you're going to take that stick to your right, left big toe, bring it round to your right big toe, and then draw back. So you actually, as you move, you're moving forwards to the sides and then drawing it back. It's quite hard work, but we're circling now in the whole of the pelvis. It might feel quite free and quite liberating after those strange deer shapes we were doing. So feel yourself moving from sitting bone to sitting bone, from front to back. And then reverse those circles. Reverse those circles. Using the whole of the upper body to stir and to open. And then beginning to slow it down, slowing it down until you're ready. To come to that point of stillness and bringing yourself onto your back to take that whole sequence to the left hand side. So this is a repetition of the class on Tuesday and I think that's a good thing. quite a complex, although subtle practice, and it's really good to do it more than once. So now you're on your back, taking your left ankle over the right knee. Arms are by your side to begin with. And take a breath in and on the breath out, lift your legs towards you. Feel now what's going on in the left hip, buttock, and take a breath in. And breathe out, float your right foot down again. Breathe in when you're down and breathe out, lift your legs towards you. Breathe in here and breathe out, float your right foot down. Take a breath in. And this time on the breath out, you come up to stay. You might want to flex the left foot. 
You can take your left hand if you can do this and thread it through the gap to interlace with the right hand either behind the thigh or over the shin. And as before, you want to avoid your chin jutting up to the ceiling, so maybe having your head resting on something. Take a few deep and exploratory breaths to inquire into where sensation is strongest for you in this pose. Eye of the needle or pigeon on the back. And it may be now that you can begin to draw your right knee further in towards you very subtly, not a yank, and your left knee eases away from you. And breathe. And find stillness. And softness. Especially in the face and the throat, around the collarbones and the shoulders. And take a full breath in. And on the breath out, lift your head towards your legs. Squeezing yourself in and breathe in again. And then breathing out, gently release. And release your hands down and your right foot down. And take your left foot and your right hand. And your left arm, you're going to need to find where you want that to be. Is it straight out or maybe up past the ear? And then this is very intuitive, the way in which you choose to rock gently from side to side. You might go really a few millimetres of movement, or you might feel quite courageous and, you want, and flamboyant, and you want to really rock fully from side to side. There's no right or wrong. You know what's coming, but let's roll around a little bit, schmoozle, noodle, noodle. And enjoy this freedom. We're here in the realm of post-ambitious yoga. And I know Monica's there, post-ambitious academia is what, how Ali describes her life right now. And I love it, so I nicked it. Eventually you might roll all the way over to the left and bring yourself up. Lovely. So that your left foot is coming around the top of your right thigh and your right foot is by your hip. And see how this differs to the other side. See if you feel that you're able to sink down into your hips. Lovely and heavy. Lovely and heavy. And then taking a breath in, finding that length. And on the breath out, taking your right ear towards your right shoulder. And breathing into the center. And taking your left ear towards the left shoulder. And breathing into the center. And we'll just do this one time, breathing out chin to the chest. And as you breathe in, tilting your head back a little bit, feeling that opening in the neck. And then come to the center, taking a moment to feel the body. Actually, Monica's not there. She's come and gone. Maybe she thought this was the later class. And then let's come to that very gentle pelvic tilting, cat cow movement. In this deer pose, so every breath in you tilt forwards, and every breath out you pull back a little bit, really draw the abdomen back towards the spine, and breathe in, tilt forwards. Full breaths, using the breath to explore the movement, using the breath to move you. Very lovely. A few more. 
Don't worry if it feels restricted, it does for me too. I'm taking one more tilt forwards and one more tilt back. And then coming to neutral spine and taking a breath in and on the breath out, twisting, using your hands and your eyes to bring you round to the right, feeling your way and then breathe in back to the centre. And as you breathe out to the left, lift that right buttock and hip over and up. And breathe in back to the center. And breathe out round to your right. The closed twist on the hip. Breathe in round to the center. And as you breathe out round to the left, lift that right buttock, that right hip a little bit, it might not be a lot. Let's take two more, breathe in back to the center. Breathe out, close. And then breathe in back to the center. Breathe out to the left, releasing that right hip. Last time, breathe into the center. And breathe out to the right. And breathe into the center and breathe out to the left. Beautiful. And then come back to the center and take a moment to feel the body here. And then we'll churn the butter again. Take your legs as wide as they'll go. Absolutely fine to sit up on something if you need to. Drawing your toes towards you. And this time we'll start at the right big toe and move to the left and then back again. So we're looking for the sense of the weight of your body pouring from sitting bone to sitting bone you, as the weight moves around with the circling. moving lovely and fluid but quite strong and an intentional movement and then reverse the circling reverse the circling lovely and then slow it down slow it down until you come to a still point and feel the body now. Notice the breath. Maybe recall your intention, your sankalpa, if that's relevant for you. And then bring your feet onto the floor, your knees in front of you. And you're trying to here, bring your belly right up to the thighs, lovely long straight spine. You can take your, no, actually it's okay, keep your hands on your knees and take a breath in and find a real brightness up the front of the body, up the chest, the throat and the head. And as you breathe out, come back to a little bit of a boat, half boat. Take your arms out to the sides. And we're gonna do a gentle pulse here. And that might be for you that this is too strong, in which case take your hands behind the knees and that'll help you. Otherwise, we just gently open a little bit as you inhale. And on the exhale, you draw back in using these core muscles. We take five more, a little bit of a pulse here. You don't have to open out completely. It's hard work. But everything we've done in the practice so far has been loosening and releasing and it's important to keep that muscular integrity as part of our practice. We need strength if we're gonna walk tall. Maybe in one of these you stay open for a breath or two. One more breath. And then draw your knees in towards you and rock forwards just for a moment into a little bit of a butterfly. So your feet are quite a long way away from your groin. And you're just soothing out the lower back after that strong core working boat. Just a couple of breaths here.
Breathing softness into the lower back. And then when you're ready, bringing yourself up into an all fours position. And taking a moment to feel this very different position now. Knees under the hips, hands underneath the shoulders. And just because we can, let's take the easy cat cow movement on all fours. So breathe in and tilt, really drop the belly down towards the front, open the chest. And breathe out, scoop it up. So it's exactly the same pelvic movement. And I repeat a lot of this for those of you who come to every class and for those of you who drop in and out of classes, it's the same. You know, people who've been practicing yoga for 40 years don't necessarily change completely what they're doing but they might change we might change our relationship to what we're doing and the sensations may vary the effects may vary so take a couple of breaths here just bringing that ease of movement into the spine just how you want it and then when you're ready curling your toes under and pushing yourself slowly into a downward dog. So I'm not teaching it in stages today. We're just coming up. And I'm going to give you five breaths to explore your dog today. So do you want to lift your heels up high? Do you want to bend your knees? The important thing is the breath and the feeling of expansion and exploration down the backs of the legs, the side body from the hip creases to the armpits. Breathing fully, maybe coming to a sense of really pushing the mat apart with the hands and the feet. Let's take two more breaths. Melting behind the heart, one more breath. And then looking forwards and walking your feet and your hands in towards each other. So you come to Standing forward fold, Uttanasana. And just let everything hang, let everything dangle. You can even shake around a bit. This is decompressing the spine. Maybe you feel really loose in the shoulders and the arms from all the work we've done in that Kelpie twist. Absolutely fine to shift your weight from foot to foot. You might want to explore straightening your legs and bending your knees again. It's all good. And then bringing your hands to your hips. Knees are slightly bent. Take a breath in and on the breath out, push through your feet and come up with a straight spine. Lovely. And take a breath in here. And then release your hands behind you, beside you, excuse me. Take a moment to feel your verticality. Feet stable and roll your shoulders up to your ears and back again, taking your arms with you so you can interlace your hands. So you can see my elbows are right up to the sides, my hands are halfway up the back. And wriggle around a bit here. And now breathe in and hitch your shoulders up to your ears and back again. And as you breathe out, straighten your arms if that is available to you. Wonderful. Little bit of a bounce in the knees. Take a breath in, really brighten up your chest, maybe take your head back a little bit as you lift your arms. And breathing out, hinge forwards at the hips, bringing your arms with you. And take a couple of breaths here, you can move a little bit in and out of it. I'm going to bend my left knee, right leg is straight. I'm going to look right over my right shoulder, allowing my arms to swing to the left. What a lovely, lovely stretch is that. Breathe into it. Take a breath in. And then look down, breathe out and bend into the right knee, straighten the left leg and swing the arms over to the right, looking over the left shoulder. And feel into this, feel into the nice access into the shoulders. One breath in and then breathe out, look down. 
and pressing through your feet, breathing in, come all the way up. Open the chest one more time, maybe take your head back. Ooh, and then breathe out, release. And take a moment to just feel the upper body in particular now. And then if you'd like to join me facing the long end of your mat and taking your feet a nice big stride, I don't know, it's more than a metre, quite a big stride apart. And so just like we did on Tuesday, we've worked quite subtly and repetitively into parts of the body, particularly the hips. And we're going to see the effects of that work now on some classical standing postures. So if you'd like to take your right foot to point to the end of your mat. And your right heel is tracing back to the left instep. Take a breath in. And as you breathe out, hands to your hips, just bend down into that right knee. And make the left leg lovely and strong so the muscles are hugging to the bone. And how about lifting up your toes so you feel that connection through the heels and the balls of your feet rather than clinging into the toes and your torso isn't sliding over it's lovely and plumb line straight and then take your fingers to your heart and take a breath in and as you breathe out float your arms open look over your back hand and then breathe in fingers to your chest and as you breathe out look over to your front fingers and then one more time, breathe in. This time, release your arms, palms facing to the floor. And settle your gaze over your front fingertips. Settle your gaze. And you can lift the front of the pelvis up if you like, tilting the tailbone back down to give you a little bit more opening across the front body. Can you find softness and stillness here within the effort? Can you breathe? On the next inhalation, straighten out the legs and exhale, hands to your hips. Wonderful. Take a breath in and come back to your warrior two, breathe out. Turn your right palm over and come into your version of a reverse warrior. Now I'm straightening my front knee just to feel into the right side body and then I come back down again. And I really like in this pose to look down to the back foot. It's just something slightly different. See how that feels for you and breathe into the right rib cage or the right side of the ribs. Well done. Doesn't the breath feel full and easier there? Maybe or maybe not. On the next breath in, straighten the front leg Bring both arms out straight. Now breathe out, bend into the front knee, right elbow is on the knee, and dangle the left arm down beside you. Beautiful. And then on the breath in, peel open, taking the left fingertips to reach up towards the ceiling as you press into that left foot. And breathe out, arm over your ear. So we take a few breaths. You could be looking under your left armpit. You could be looking up towards your left fingertips. It's really nice just to look down at the right foot. That might be less strain on the neck. And can you spin the chest a little around to the left and breathe fully now into the left side. One more breath in. And then breathe out, look down at the front foot and bring your left hand to your hip. And gently ease yourself up, bringing your feet to parallel. Toes are pointing in now, heels a bit out. You can bend a bit in the knees. Take a breath in and feel that lift up out of the pelvis. And then leading with your heart, breathe out, hinge, chin, 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 so that your back is parallel with the floor and take another breath in so you're really looking for length and then come as far down as right works for you and you could take your big toes you could straighten your legs 
You could tilt the weight forwards into the front of your feet and see how that gives you a little bit more room for maneuver. And breathe. It's also fine to have your hands out in front of you if you can't reach or keeping your hands to your hips. Anybody with lower back pain bends the knees, that will release the pelvis. One more breath in and a long breath out. And then bringing your hands to your hips, breathe in, come up with a straight spine. And breathe out here, feel the body. And then we take those poses to the left. So take your left foot to point to the end of the mat. Right foot in about 45 degrees, heel to instep. And take a breath in, lovely and spacious and light in the upper body and then breathe out. Bend down into that left knee. It's a lovely, strong right leg. Vertical torso, fingertips to your heart, breathe in. And breathe out, float and look over your left fingers. And breathe in, fingers to the heart. And breathe out, float and look over the left fingers. And breathe in, fingers to your heart. Actually, I forgot to straighten the front leg. And breathe out, come into your warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. So I forgot this time to say lift your toes. So you're really pressing into the heels and balls of your feet. And now I want you to find as much softness in the upper body as you can. Whole of the upper body, find a silkiness, a softness. One more breath in. As you breathe out, straighten the front leg, hands to your hips. Take another breath in. And then come straight back into your warrior two, breathe out. Take over your left hand and come into reverse warrior. So you could straighten the front leg as you find that lovely opening in the left. And then you could come back down again. I'm looking down past my right shoulder to my right heel. It might be right for you or you might be looking under your left armpit. Take a few breaths. We're coming towards the end of the physical practice. One more breath in. And then on the breath out, propel yourself back so the front leg is straight. Take a breath in and then bring your left elbow to your knee and your right arm dangles. And breathe in, peel it open. Peel it open and breathe out. Bring your arm over your ear. And then choose where you want to take your eyes, possibly down to the left foot, or maybe spinning the chest and looking past your right armpit. And breathe yourself open and see if you can find that stillness, that inner stillness right in the midst of the effort. One more breath in, then look down, breathe out. And push yourself up on the breath in. Hands to your hips, breathe out. Beautiful. And we'll take one more standing pose, which is another forward fold, but with the option, you could do what we did before, where you could roll your shoulders back, just like we did before, but we had our legs together. Interlace the hands and draw them past the tailbone. Lovely opening in the chest. Heels are out, toes are in. Take a breath in. And then breathe that hinge, bringing your chest first and then bringing your arms with you. And deciding here, as you pour your weight into the front of the feet, if you want to keep your knees bent, finding a softer, more accessible forward fold. Or if you want to try and straighten the legs and lift the tops of the thighs up and back, breathe. One more breath in and then breathing out, lower your hands to your lower back, slide them down your legs and around to the front of your mat. So you can come down to rest via a downward dog. You might want to 
take a couple of breaths in your downward dog. Feeling the space that that standing sequence might have given you to breathe. At some point, you're gonna drop your knees. And come over to lying on your back. And it may be for you tonight that you want to come straight into a relaxation. In which case, please make sure you're warm enough. Or it may be you want to bring your knees into your chest, have a little rock around. Some people really like happy baby. You hold the feet or the legs and you draw the knees down to the armpits. A little rock around here. So you know your bodies, you choose what's right for you. And um, I'm going to leave you now because I'm going to be teaching the Hatha Flow class. So please um, take a proper relaxation, allow yourself five, 10 minutes to relax and simply feel the effects of the practice and see if you can recall that quality that you invited into your practice and maybe 